heard on the radio of a man over the rail around mid-span area of the bridge. And Jason, the gentleman over the, over the rail, was going through a tough time for many, many years. Uh, suffered from a mental illness, and he felt the doctors were not helping him. Didn't like the medications, and he felt maybe he was misdiagnosed, and he was from New Jersey. So he flew out to the bridge three times to do this. And I asked, well, Jason, why this bridge? Why the Golden Gate? You know what? This will get the job done. At one point, it was starting to get really cold out. Golden Gate Bridge officer gave Jason his jacket. I thought we were doing okay. But at one point, Jason gave the jacket back. After that, Jason just kind of stood erect and leaned to his right and was gone. And I know that when someone gets to that level, that it's very, very difficult to get through to them and to get them to come back. But we have to try. And I think a little piece of me dies with them, too. So I was with the Highway Patrol for a little over 23 years, and I worked on the Golden Gate Bridge. Bridge is the number one site in America for loss of life to suicide, if people didn't know that. And we get a lot of folks who will jump over that barrier, jump over that pedestrian rail, and stand there contemplating suicide. My job was to go up and work with them, see if we could get them back. And I did this hundreds of times. I think anybody that goes into that area should be trained to handle these type of, of incidents. I was disappointed. They are, that's, that's somebody's life. So I go in at the end of the night, and the sergeant's in their office, and I say, hey, Sarge, you got a minute? Can I tell you about this? And he goes, yep. He goes, that's, that's what happens down there. Unfortunately, that's, that's part of working down there. I go, yeah, but is there any kind of training for this? He goes, well, we'll, we'll look into it. Kind of figured it wasn't going to happen. My solution was to research things myself. So I was hitting the library. I didn't know anything about mental illness, the suffering it went through, the stages of things, and, and how to approach someone. There wasn't a whole lot even back then that would apply to my situation, working on that bridge, you know, this close to close, face to face. You know, someone's life is at risk right now. You know, I started looking at the active listening skills, and that helped a lot. When I was talking to folks over the rail, when they came back, I would ask each and every person, what did I do that helped the situation? And what did I do that wasn't so hot, that, that hurt the situation? And so they would tell me, and I would always write things down. It took a lot of courage to go over that rail. Personally, I think it, it takes even more courage to come back. And there's a lot of dignity in that also. My grandfather lost his life to suicide. Um, I never met him, but who knows what we could have been. Knowing that mental illness could be in the family, and and I was I didn't see the things that were occurring to me until I actually went to a routine physical with my doctor, and he looks at me, he goes, Kevin, he goes, uh, you have depression, so I thought if if I'm experiencing these things, if I can help somebody else through a very very dark time, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do my my darndest to to try and do that. I had done a couple of news articles, and then I started getting these requests to go out and speak. Could I make a bigger impact by going out by myself and, and telling these things that I've witnessed and things that have occurred to me? I wanted to show folks in a relatively easy way that if we see somebody hurting, struggling, that how can we approach and talk to them so we can have the courage to do that, but also make them feel at ease. I like getting up on stage and talking to folks, but after that, to get the, to talk to people. That is my, uh, kind of my therapy, the thing I like to do. You may just be the turning point that they need. I'm amazed at the things that I've told folks that have occurred in my life that I thought, wow, you know, I could lose my job with this mental illness. Um, I could lose friends, all these different things. None of that. Gained friends from all around the world. And I tell folks, I go, you don't see this big smiley face. It's I'm too many years of being a cop. But inside, it's like this big yellow happy smile thing. If I could rip this off, you see it. So it's OK. Come up and talk. One person wrote, I tried killing myself a year back. And trust me, I wish I had you next to me, Kevin. I know in that moment, all we need is someone to understand we are in pain. I had no one with me, no parents, no love, no friends. 
Kevin, I stand up and bend my head in respect for you. Don't give up, and I won't too. It's really good. I want to reach as many people as I can to show them there is a way not only to survive, but to thrive. People say, Kevin Briggs, you've saved so many people on the bridge. And I will tell them straight out, no, I haven't. I was there at a very, very dark day, and I helped some folks. And there's many people doing the same thing, and each and every one of you can do the same thing. It doesn't have to be on a bridge. All it takes is one person to change another person's life. Listen to understand.